Map Symbols and Scales by Samantha S. Bell. Chapter 1, Reading Maps. You are moving to a new town with your family. Your family has never been there before. Your family uses a map to help get there. I know your families would probably use a GPS, but sometimes maps can be reliable, especially if you're moving to a place without good GPS signal. After you move, you use maps to find your way around the area. Neighborhood maps can show schools and churches. Park maps show playgrounds, trails, and picnic areas. Maps can show many different kinds of places. We can use maps while hiking to find out how far we need to go. When you look at a map, you might see a lot of lines or little pictures called icons. There are also symbols on a map. Each symbol represents something in the area. Most maps also have a scale. The scale tells us about distance. Scales are used to show how far apart things are on Earth compared to the map. Map shows, maps show us where to go. With symbols and scales, they tell us about the things around us, too. Chapter 2, Types of Symbols. The symbols on a map show important features people might need to know. Some symbols are the same on most maps. Lines are used for roads and rivers. Dots or stars show where cities are located. Most excuse me, maps have symbols that make them easy to use. Maps show the location of important places, such as airports. Sometimes maps use icons for symbols. An airplane can represent an airport. A tree might represent represent a park. Some symbols are point symbols. Point symbols show exactly where something is on the map. Dots and stars are point symbols. Icons are point symbols too. Some symbols are lines. Oops. They may be used to show a boundary between countries or states. You can kind of see them in the photograph here. Lines are often used when a feature is long. Roads are usually drawn as black lines. Rivers are usually drawn as blue lines. The lines on a map might represent roads. And here you can see closer up. Sometimes certain areas on a map are shaded with color. The color is called an area symbol. Green usually represents forests, as you see in this photo. Tan usually represents deserts. Blue represents lakes, as is here or oceans. States and countries can be different colors too. Most maps have a key or a legend. The key tells us what each symbol means. The symbol and the key help you find what is on the map. Some maps use different colors to represent different things. On this map, the green area is a national park. The blue is a lake. National park, lake. Chapter three, types of scales. Some scales tell us how far it is from one place to another. Others tell us how big something is. A verbal scale shows two numbers on either side of an equal sign. The first number is a measurement on the map. The second number is the distance on Earth. The numbers help us figure out how far apart things are. For example, they might say one inch equals one mile. This means one inch on the map is equal to one mile on Earth. That's where I'm measuring with a ruler or uh, your fingertip or a quarter is helpful. You can use a scale to find out how far away something is. Some scales are called bar scales. A bar scale looks like a ruler. Bar scales are, called, are like verbal scales. They show how a measurement on the map compares to the distance on Earth. Some scales are called RF scales. An RF scale looks like a fraction or ratio. It tells us how big the real area is. For example, the RF scale might say one one thousand or one to one thousand. This means that the real area is one thousand times bigger than the area on the map. People use maps to find out about different places. Symbols and scales help them understand the maps. So from Duluville to Lewburg, the links on Easy Street would probably be if we turned that line to put up here or remove this scale down here in our minds, we could see that it is about equal to 10 miles from one city, which is a dot, to the other city, 
which is a die. Bar scales tell us the distance on the map, how the distance on the map compares to the distance on Earth. And here at the end, we have another a nonfiction text feature, our glossary.